Hey, welcome to part 5 of modeling the old school joystick. So on part 5 I'm going to unwrap the UVs and I'm going to use 3D Max. Um, but you can, you know, you can use any 3D application. The, the techniques and methods and tools are pretty much the same. Um, so I've deleted, all, I've, re, I've saved the, a new sub tool, saved the new uh, Z tool, sorry. Um, just the, the re -top of mesh, so you know at each sta stage you want to um, save it out, so save out the high poly, save out the low poly, whatever. Um, and then I've just merged down, deleted out all the high poly ones, and just merged down all the low poly. And now I'm going to just uh, send this across to Max. So I'm going to be using um, the Sticks plugin here, which is my favourite plugin ever. <laughs> and uh, I discuss it in my recent video, um, ZBrush plugins that I use and it's only five quid and it's absolutely indispensable if you jump between your 3d package and zebrush a lot um you can also come down to export and export with the just check for the, this group option here to export um, and maintain groups which will uh, break up your mesh based on your poly group so if i do an auto groups here it's going to group by uh, mesh continuity and now each of these will be their own um, object in Max. So up to sticks plugin and export OBJ and allow multiple groups. So I just hit export. It's copied to the, uh, the clipboard. So now in Max, I just hit this import, and there is our object. I'll just select them. You can see ten objects selected. So. Um, those poly groups have been preserved and each of them has been pretty much converted to its own edible poly object which is exactly what I wanted um, I've just press F and Z to zoom into the front view and I'm just going to create a simple box here just as a scale reference and we can see there that it's 13, 13 centimeters, 130 millimeters so I'm going to leave it at that for the size um, and now I'll just grab all the objects and the pivots are alright so I'll leave that and the first thing I want to do is some uh, mesh cleanup and that's left over from uh, the end of the last video and ZBrush and um, so if I select this and just isolate it and now go to element mode you can see that it's a single element but the uh, topology isn't continuous here so F and Z to zoom in the front view again and polygon select these top ones and attach to an element and that's just 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 to clean that up there um, and one other thing there control a to select all them and down the smoothing groups i'm just going to do an auto smooth just so you can see um and also um, just uh, maybe add this material here You'll be able to see now if I turn off edge faces, um, you know, that it's pretty good there. Silhouette's good. And these curves are pretty good here. Yeah, and there's the uh, the faceted look I was talking about on cylindrical shapes, but I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to leave this as is. You could also optimize it by um, welding these verts in here and in here. Um, but looking at it from the top view, there's this very, very slight curve. And for the sake of it, I'm going to leave that in. You could you could definitely optimize that but I'll leave it in and um, it's only a few extra verts it's no big deal and um, so that's that pretty much cleaned up and uh, then this button also uh, in fact I'll just select all of them and give it that material sorry give it this material and select that button again and just because I'm a bit weird about these things I'm gonna just uh, change the wireframe to black for all of them and button again and isolate and if I just select the center vert control click the polygon to, to, to convert the sub object selection and control click vert again it's just a kind of a quick way to select all them and then I will collapse them and that is I think, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all the cleanup I wanted to do before you start UV. And so we'll start with uh, this this piece here. 
And I always, um, it's just a habit. I always add a UV map and clear and then an unwrap just in case, you know. I always, it's just a habit I, I get into. Sometimes you have existing UVs and they just want to clear them off and start from scratch. So you'll see here, um, I have a Poly Unwrapper 4, which is a, an excellent plugin um, for Max that just tacks onto your UVW editor. And I'm going to be using it, but most of the tools uh, can, can also be found in Max's tools. And in 2017 now, they've improved the tools again in Max. Um, but I'm still going to use this because it's so useful and it makes things much quicker. But not to worry, as I say, you can still access the tools, most of them at least, uh, from here. And also, I'm going to be using, um, I always use Hedis, um, not as much as I used it. Because it's the same max tools have gotten better, but I always use it for um, relaxing and and uh, and the rectilinear relax as well. Rectilinear and then relax is a good technique. I'm going to show that in a while, but it's not essential. But I like to use it, and it's it's also and um, with this Hedis UV layout bridge script, it's just like having Hedis within Max. Um, you know, it's like it's there's just a click to get in, click to get out. And it automatically adds those UVs, I and mean, when you add a unwrap UVW modifier, um, it'll show up whatever changes you made in Hedis. And also, you can send existing UVs um, through an edit. So if I click this, um, you can either send brand new ones, clear them off, the same as adding a UVW map and clear, or else just edit the existing ones. So uh, first thing is first, when you look at um, you know, an object like this. You might wonder, you know, how how on earth am I going to unwrap this? And um, it's actually it's actually pretty simple. Um, so if I go to edge mode, and I'm just going to, um, I'll tell you what I'll do actually first. I'm going to just select um, an edge here, and just hit unfold, um, strip from loop, and you can see that if I add in those UVs and scale down this element or I'll just actually pack it in there you can see um, at first glance you might think that you know, look it's you know the UVs are pretty good there and they're not too bad considering the type of shape that it is for you know one two clicks um, and and depending on your circumstances th these could be good enough um, I wanted to go a bit more in depth into that, you know, there, there's some stretching here, you know, so um, you could go to scale, uh, vertical, and just scale that to their squares, but you can see also down here that um, it's gone pretty terrible, and this is why, you know, it, it might be okay, as I say, in certain circumstances, you might notice those that stretching, uh, depending on... Um, depending on what text you have on it. Um, so if I just, um, I'll just collapse that. And I'll jump into Hedis just to show you what I'm talking about. So if I press one, you can see there's existing UVs and the red and blue are areas of distortion that are uh, stretching and tension. So if I just hit R and then F, that's rectilinear unwrap and then F um, relaxes the interior of the shell but keeps it rectilinear but it hasn't done us any favours here so what you can do then is um, I'm just going to exit that, I just want to show that example and um, I can I'm oh, sorry actually I'll, I'll, I, I can do it in, in Hedis or I can do it in Max it's no big deal um, I would have just did it in Hedis there but I'll show it in Max instead so I'll add the unwrap again and I'll just select these edges where I want the seams to be loop and then um, instead of doing this I like to just uh, right click in here and say break and now we can just break them away into their own um, elements here based on these seams that we've set up so if I go into Max now, sorry, into the Relax tool, uh, Relax by Edge Angles, keep boundary points fixed. This is essentially the same as um, 
using that rectilinear and then F to, f to relax within that interior without disturbing the uh, rectangular shape. And I'll just turn on the um, texture. And I'll just select all these and start relaxing. Let it go for a few seconds. And you can see there it's kind of relaxing somewhat. Now Max 2017, that visual indicator of distortion um, is in there finally now, so I'm delighted about that, but it's still way too buggy for me to use, so I'm still on 2016. Um, so I'll just collapse that again and send it back to Hedis as an edit. Press 1, and you can see that we still have um, this distortion and everything, so in Hedis it's very simple to um, relieve this I just press R R R R and you can see it's automatically gotten rid of all that and then if you wanted if there's still a bit left you could press F F F F and that's as simple as it is and then send and now it's back at max it's added this UVW map and paste and then I can just add an unwrap and show the texture again and that has um, gotten rid of uh, a lot of that distortion so our seam is around the back you know obviously we have to have a seam here and this is a good example you see there's still some distortion here but um, if I was to, if I was to just select all these and pelt them um, and then I'll actually just use, um, the, you know where the relax is there now, I'm just going to use uh, the relax here and then start to relax them here um, you know they're going back to their their natural kind of state when they're relaxed and that um, that is relieving some of that distortion but you know this is the way they're going to end up, But the, so that's it's like a ratio of um, distortion to seams um, and also to how square or straightened out your UVs are so these are things that you have to consider when you're unwrapping and you kind of make these trade-offs so for me um, in this case I'm just going to undo and I would rather keep them like that because um, you know I'll just pack normalize because maybe rescale elements are okay, you know this is this is a, a pretty decent unwrap. Um, I'll just bring up the tiles, and they're all. If you look at these numbers, this is why people use these kind of textures. Um, if you look at these numbers, they're all facing the same way. So um, sometimes, depending on what you're unwrapping, you want to make sure. It depends on the texture you're using as well. Um, that these are all you know facing the same way the letters are the numbers and if they're backwards that means um, your UVs are inverted or flipped so we still have a small bit of distortion here you can see um, just here and it's basically where it's torn in the corners so if I wanted to relieve that um, I could select uh, maybe the maybe these seams here or maybe even this one this one uh, this one and it's not too bad there but I'll select it anyway loop and break and just select all of them and pack them and now they're, they're broken up even more into shells and I will just jump back to Hedis. Press one, and you know there's uh, very little, if 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 zero, distortion there. So I could press F, F, F. I'll do the rectilinear first. I'm just pressing an R, and then pressing an F, F, F. F F F and send and back to
to max and just add an unwrap again and pack normalize and now I'll just put that display texture on again so another way to approach this would be to um, you know to grab these elements I'll just press F2 and just do a planar map you know and that's because um, so you're you're projecting from straight down because it's almost you know a flat a flat sort of a planar projection if you look at the UVs like this and then you could just uh, relax it a couple of times so if I grab these ones that seem to be uh, planar let's turn on element sorry it's not gonna work there over here and um, if I select these faces on the top and that's going to be those ones and then just select them as elements along with this one then just do a planar un unwrap and then relieve the tension in them so I'm going to delete that unwrap and delete that one and go back to this one uh, because for me you know that's good enough that's not really going to be noticeable that distortion so I will collapse that one and hide that because it's finito and I'll grab this part next isolate that now for this part um, it's quite simple you can just go to front and I'll just add uh, you map and clear unwrap and for the likes of this here I'll select these faces press F2 for the likes of this here we can just go mapping planar map and then just relax it a couple of times and a few tiles F2 you know and that's that's pretty good we have some distortion here it's torn in the corner you could unwrap that separately and um, using a cylindrical unwrap or the, any of the other methods I showed in the last piece um, the rectilinear or the straight selection so if I just um, we'll say just I'm just gonna add a seam in there um, and then just break it and then just select this I probably won't be able to loop that because it's, it's um, poles running through it so it just stops at the poles loop and I'll just select a few more loop full loop is selected and just break and grab that element I'll just get that one out of the way and get that one out of the way and now this one and we can just do a cylindrical and I'll just rescale them And then the same thing there, where you can scale it in. And we can also just uh, select an edge. And just use that unfold strip from loop. And that'll uh, relieve all that stretching. And then rescale elements and pack them in and you know that's not too bad there it's pretty pretty good so this part next and I will probably just press F2 and I'll simply just um, grab grab a few selections of faces here you know sort of planar so you can see the plane here so that's like a planar projection and then I'm just going to hit uh, quick planar mapping and this you could also just hit it here so if I undo that um, hit it there and then choose your um, choose your axis but it's normalizing it to 0 to 1 um, so it's it's not ideal so this 
this poly unwrapper just uh, gives you an exact representation of uh, what's in, in the face here sorry what's in the viewport and the geometry yeah that's um, I rarely use that um, this is way easier to use um, so I'll just quick planar map that again move it out of the way and then we can just do the same select those faces there quick planar map move it select these and yeah that one there quick planar map and move uh, I forgot to just do the bottom here so I'll just select the bottom really quickly just to get that out of the way in the screen in the uh, UV editor and this is the underside so you know um, let's make sure there's nothing else selected so it's not really going to be I can scale that down because it's taken up going to take up way too much room in the UV sheet so I can scale that down because it's not really going to be seen or even if it's not going to be seen at all just delete it all together but say if it's a prop with physics on it or something that's going to get tipped over or whatever you can see underneath it at any stage obviously you want some uh, geometry there so the last bit here now um, is these faces here so quick plane on map and um, we'll just select these oh sorry yeah I have um, the strip underneath here as well that should have been included um, so if I select this element here yeah, there's a small strip underneath here that I would want to select also so I'm just going to select these quickly and this one and quick plane I map them together sorry these ones were selected so I'm just going to alt drag over them and just do that once more without selecting that ring in the middle and quick plane the map move them out of the way and again grab all them quick plane the map and just grab all them rescale elements and pack custom and this will show another tool here when you have uh, you want to straighten out your UV islands so the tool here to straighten out these shells we just go to edge mode and just select an edge you can see it in max it's this tool here it's called align to edge but if I click it you see that it, it, <laughs> for whatever reason it doesn't really work because it hasn't aligned it to, to the edge and um, whereas the one uh, poly unwrapper if I select an edge here and same tool align shell to edge you know flattens it out perfectly so I, I don't know the max one it's just a bit weird and um, so you know I'm not going to bother packing because I'm just going to uh, collapse that and when we attach all these together at the end combine them into one object and then we can pack the UVs so I'll just hide that yeah, the likes of these here and yeah, we can just delete three of them and you can map and clear unwrap and then all we have to do is mapping quick planar map relax and that's that unwrap there collapse that so you know for repeating elements like that that you don't want to have their own texture space and um, you can just uh, bake the map bake the normal map and then duplicate and place these after and they'll be stacked in the UV sheet and they'll just share the same UV space so they'll also get the same texture um, instead of having to offset them you can also offset them um, out of 0 to 1 and then put them back in and it'll be the same result 
so either either I'll show definitely show a video about that in the future so that's unwrapped uh, hide selection and this one here is going to be pretty much just as simple mapping planar map relax and that is that done so collapse that one hide it this here um, pretty simple so I'll just add the unwrap go to the front view Z to zoom and I'll just select these and mapping plane a map and that's just the same as uh, right clicking and breaking them uh, relax and this one here I'll just see we probably want to put our seam here so that's hidden now these seams um, they don't it's still a good it's still good practice to, to hide them when you can um if it means that you don't you know sometimes you have to cut extra seams to relieve the distortion and that's the ratio I was talking about earlier on so you want to make that decision um, if you can live with the distortion and you don't want to add extra seams or if the distortion is too much you have to add extra seams try and hide them if you can't hide them um, it's not a huge deal either because most people are texturing in, in 3d uh, applications like substance paint or, or kixel uh, suite these days um, and there's also triplanar projections for certain uh, texture types but that's a story for another day uh, right so um, I'll just uh, break that and select this element here and you can use any of those techniques so I can just do so unfold strip from loop and let's see it's looping through that one there so I'll select this edge instead and it's taken this because the loop is going all the way up here but it's, it's not a huge deal because I can just um, go to front and grab these again planar map and relax and you can see what I'm doing here um, a lot of you know the sort of ways of showing how to use Max I don't know if the official Autodesk channel or whatever it's all sort of using um, converts using these seam tools and converting the seams to blah 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 it's just too slow for me I'd rather just grab lumps of faces and just break them away or else just plain or map them it's way quicker than, than all this messing around up here that's just my personal opinion anyway you know you can you can use these seam cutting tools and um, for hard surface stuff for characters they, it can be handy but for hard surface stuff um, I just don't bother with them just use that just grab faces and then um, break them or just plain them at them to break them off it's the same thing also in 2017 um, selection tools are much better they're more in line with um, the tools we'd be used to in editable poly and there's also a script um, called mouse it's in mouse script pack 2 called easy peel that allows you to just make selections in the editable poly and then unwrap them based on that selection so it's actually a very good script um, that, I, that I do actually use. Um, I just bought the pack there recently, but then 2017 came out with similar sort of functions, so um, I've just tried it out briefly, so that's another little um, handy uh, plugin. So that's that one done, so I'll just collapse that. And I'll just, sorry, unhide all. And if I just uh, apply a, a checker pattern, checker material here. Um, sorry, I just need to apply V-Ray material. Yes. And just apply that material again. Uh, these are all unwrapped, so I'll just hide them. That is also unwrapped hide it and the joystick is uh, very simple F set to zoom in UV map and clear UV unwrap 
And same again. Grab those top faces. And mapping, uh, playing a map, and you can see I'm using, you know, very few tools. And you can use cylindrical projection or just use that unfold strip from loop again. Uh, rescale them, pack them, and voila. We have some distortion here. So I forgot to, uh, I forgot to just. Yeah, relax this and that is sorry it's actually attached to here so I'll just plan them up that again relax rescale and pack and that just relieves that distortion there and that is pretty much um, the object unwrapped so unhide all sorry with this piece here left to do isolate that uh, simply done again like the other ones more or less the same tools we'll be using so f2 and break get that out of the way this one here is going to be uh, select this edge and unfold strip from loop and let's tap it on and where is the other bit that yeah sorry that's after getting that in the loop and that's that's fine actually because I'm just gonna select these top faces here and mapping Plane a map, don't need to relax that. And then if I just unisolate, it's not going to matter here. You could probably even delete delete those interfaces because uh, they're, they're never going to be seen. So that is actually what I'm going to do. And you could also, you know, that, that seam, you could move that seam wherever you like. So say you wanted the seam uh, to be here. A no, quick way to do that is just select where you want the edge where you want your seam to be instead of having to re-wrap every re-unwrap everything you can just turn off element mode just grab them um, grab them up to there we'll say say up to there turn off element mode that's the inside one there so I'm gonna just delete that as I said so select them, break, break, move them away, and then just select, you know, the seam is there now. So you would just, back to edge, double click that edge, and then just stitch it. So now we've moved the seam around to the back quickly and easily without having to, um, to re-unwrap it again. So that's grand. Rescale them and collapse that. And I'll just isolate that. And just select an edge, shift select, delete. You don't need them. Close down cell. And now I'll just select whichever of them. Um, and attach multiple. So I'll just shift select all them attach now they're all one objecto and just go and unwrap again and now we'll just rescale elements sorry I'll select everything rescale elements and um, you can also normalize so that'll uh, rescale them and pack them and give you a sort of an auto packing the packing algorithm um, has been improved in Max 2004, sorry, sorry, 17 as well. But uh, you still manual uh, packing is usually the best way to go. Um, it's just going to give you much, much, much better results. And I actually enjoy unwrapping them. You know, it's like a puzzle or whatever. You're trying to fit everything in and messing around with things. Uh, a lot of people despise it, but I actually enjoy it. Strangely enough, 
Right, so the best thing to do is, you know, we'll start here. So I'm going to just leave that in the corner. It's unwrapped here with a bit of padding, which is important for baking. Um, I'll leave that there. Um, this awkward piece I'll probably leave. So what you're aiming for here is to, you know, pack in, in, uh, pack in, squ in square kind of groups. So there's no point in having a big, long UV oil, and that's all the way through the length of 0 to 1, because then you can't scale anything up. Um, in that case, you might want to break some stuff away, add some seams in, which won't really matter if you're going, you can paint them out. Um, so there's a bit of an art to, to, to pack in as well, and a few trade-offs that you also have to make. Uh, for instance, this part here, which is the underside, um, if you weren't deleting it, you know, you could just scale it down. You could even scale it right down and just uh, put it in here. Or put it in here because um, you know that's going to be dead space anyway. And then we could just move that in here, and you want to fill up that space and move that one back in there. So that's you know you can have a look there. You could texture and then you know it, it might be enough resolution. So you'd have to make these are just decisions that you you have to just make yourself. Um, and then we can, you know, this stuff can all go in here. And these circular parts in here. And then start grabbing things and sort of, um, you know, placing them. You can even grab them. Say so we want to grab all these. There's a tool here called uh, Pack Together, where I'll just pack them all <laughs> together and you can also reduce the pattern here to and um, bring them closer together and then we can grab these and do the same thing pack together so as I said we're aiming for sort of square and um, to, to maintain square shapes and that's just a bit too big to fit in there so and um, the likes of that there we could probably fit in and it fits in uh, pretty perfectly and now I'd probably have to break these apart a bit to try and utilize that space more probably even um, rotate them and I could even just rotate these out a little bit or even even just flip vertical and select overlapping sorry select inverted and they're inverted because I just um, flipped them so I'll just flip them again and just rotate them just as easy and we still have a pattern on the bottom there and then we could try and uh, fit some of these in so um, you can also move and then hold down shift and that'll uh, constrain it vertically or horizontally. And also in Max 2017, <laughs> another update is um, uh, you have the gizmo, the proper move kind of gizmo that you have in the viewport. So I'll move them in closer. Now there's nothing really, that's, you know, there's nothing really to pack in there. As I say, it's dead space, so I'd probably uh, rotate them out a bit. And sometimes awkwardly kind of shapes, you can even move away altogether and just um, try and fit them in later, or even small, small bits. Um, what else can we? You might be able to fit in there. Um, in fact, it might be an idea to rotate that like that altogether. And um, that way, then we can move some of these down. Now if I move everything out this way, I just want to see how much space I'm going to have left. And move them in, so I'll get them right down in the corner. As I say, it's just a sort of a puzzle, um, packing sort of a thing. And that's that's all it is really, with those few things to uh, consider. You know, how you want them. Um, 
your seams and the, the distortion to be. And you could probably throw them in there. As I said, you're looking for though this is kind of rectangular. So if I grab all these and hold control and scale them, because it's rectangular, we're hitting this edge here and leaving all this dead space. Um, and it's you know it's important to scale them all together because we've already rescaled them. But you can you know you can go back and forth. And um, so what we'd probably do there is, you know, it's I I I tear it up as well. So I'm going to be doing them. Um, you know, scaling and moving, scaling and moving. So you're really going to just get a lot of newcomers or sort of guys just learn and think you can just um, press auto pack and that's it, it's done. But and um, that's <laughs> that's rarely the case. Even with that tool, um, I pack that, which seems to be the best at, at doing this type of stuff automatically. Even headers, it's it's not that great. I find with the auto um, unwrap. I'm sorry, the auto pack. So that gives us a bit more space there. We can move these down. And then we could probably just flip these. And then, you know, start to spread some of them out. So and grab this one. And bring it down there. And this stuff as well, like you can... Um, I'm doing it quite loosely here, quite roughly, I suppose, because I don't want to spend <laughs> so much time doing this because it's not the most exciting. But basically, you know, go in and you know, it could, when you start, the, you do it in stages. I say you start from the big and move down smaller, smaller, and really kind of focus in on areas like, for instance, here. Uh, there's a lot of wasted space here. So I'd probably move some of these around. Uh, probably move these out of the way. Uh, grab all these. Uh, move them in a bit there. And then line some things up over here. Um, so just looking around for dead space. Probably move these up a tiny bit. Move that in there. Move that back a bit there. And grab everything again and scale. You know, and it's, it gets closer and closer. So um, you can check here in uh, just tools. Set your texture size, generate, and it'll tell you there. 66.88 percent that's how much of the uv space has been used so the closer you can get to 100 percent obviously uh, the better you're going to be so as i said i did this quite uh, you know roughly or loosely or whatever so there's definitely room for improvement here but i'm not going to spend much more time on this because um you know it's just about getting the, the idea across so you know padding is important very important um, because you want it you want to leave enough space between UV shells in pixels so for two reasons for uh, bleeding across islands with bacon um, and then bleeding across textures with mip mapping so mip mapping the further away your object is um, from say the player view um, on screen it'll load down so the level of detail will drop with the geometry the further away it gets and also the textures will mip which means they will dynamically drop down in in uh, resolution because the, the game engine kind of atlases your textures at multiple resolutions so if you have um, say five mip levels um, up to five mip levels you will probably need up to 16 pixels of pattern um, but you can t test this out for yourself um, you know as long as you have enough because there's no point in um, like if you use a certain amount of padding and then uh, when you're baking you can also uh, use dilation uh, in pixel pixels as well but basically that just pushes the uh, the texture across these seams and kind of blends it out so you don't see um, 
the artifacts I'm talking about. So um, I think I think I'll leave it at that for this. Um, you know, it gives you a good idea of uh, how to get started and a few different tools and techniques. Um, so hopefully it was useful. And if anyone has any questions or whatever, or wants to see anything in more detail, just uh, give us a shout and I, I can make it an extra video maybe. So when I finished recording the video, uh, I went out to make myself a hard-earned cup of tea and uh, a few slices of toast. And the toaster tripped my electricity, which knocked off the computer. And in turn, I lost the max scene that I had unwrapped the joystick in. But every cloud and all that, silver lining. Um, so thankfully, uh, Camtasia um, auto saved, but I usually turn off auto saving max because uh, it's when you get when your scene files get too big, it takes way too long to save. So that's another trade off. But anyway, I digress. Um, the good news though is that um, I had to redo it. And I'm not exaggerating when I just say I did it in Hedis. Um, I did cut all the seams and unwrapped it, uh, the whole model in Hedis. In I'm not exaggerating as I say in five minutes, and then sent it back to Max and packed it, and that took another whatever uh, ten minutes or something. So it was very 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 quick to do, um, and I just select. I didn't even bother. I just attached them all to one object and just. Uh, Unwrap them over and head us. So I'll just go over there, press one, and uh, that's red because it's scaled down to fit in there. No big deal. So um, if I go to pack, um, oh, you have to actually pack first, but I can show it in max anyway. I got it, I think I got up to 75% or something. Uh, so that was it in head us anyway. And if I just open the unwrap, um, there she blows and tools generate. Yes, yeah, just 75 percent. Um, so it was a bit better than the other one. So I just thought that would show that that even though the video I think is whatever nearly 50 minutes long, I'm going over this process and explaining and all the rest of it. But to actually do it. It only, t it only t took five minutes in this case to do the unwrap and then the packing spend a bit more time on that so that was probably um good that uh, the shit toaster um tripped out the crappy um western australian fucking oh, sorry um ancient electrical s systems they seem to have in a lot of these places so uh, enough of that. All right, then. Yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you again in the next one. Cheers, thanks. Good luck.